And so do not be afraid because God gives grace. Do not be afraid because God hears your prayer. But then lastly, do not be afraid because God is working. God is working. Turn with me one more time over to the book of Matthew, chapter 1. Matthew, chapter 1. And we'll just read the message to Joseph and then we'll talk about him again. Matthew chapter 1, verse number 20. So we've looked at Zacharias and Elizabeth. We have looked at Mary. And now we will see Joseph, the stepfather of the Messiah. Verse 20 says, But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary your wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. So do not be afraid because God is working. Again, just to look with the others, we'll look at Joseph's characteristics. He is a just man, verse 19. You could also say an upright man, okay? It says, Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not wanting to put her away, uh, not wanting, sorry, to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. And so this is after the point where Mary has been found with a baby. And I'll tell you what, that's got to be really uncomfortable for Matthew, all right? For, sorry, for Joseph. You're married to Mary, and you're betrothed, and you're not sleeping with anybody, and she's not sleeping with anybody, and you're not sleeping with each other. And then she walks up to you and says, hey, Joseph, I know this is going to sound strange, but hear me out. I'm pregnant, and it's from God. I mean... Okay, right. (laughs) Like, if I'm going to be honest, if I'm going to be Joseph, like, yeah, right, it's from God. Okay, sounds sounds good. But he was a, think about the circumstance that this must put him in, the pain he must feel, and yet he's still described as a just man. He wanted to do what was right. He wanted to to, uh, take the next right step because he was just. Yeah, it would be allowable for them to separate at this time because they had not yet come together. And he was a just man, and he wanted justice to be done. And yet he was also a gracious man, right? Uh, he, wanted to, he wanted to be just, but he did not want to make her a public example, and he was minded to put her away secretly. And, yet, and, and so in his justice, he was also gracious, and, and he did not want to belittle, to scrutinize, and to slander Mary, and he instead intended to quietly put her away. Justice was done, but, it was not, but a big stink wasn't made. And, you know, there's something to be said for doing justice and not just shouting from the rooftops. There is something to be said for, for doing what's right and yet not drawing attention to yourself or to the issue. We need to be gracious in confrontation. We need to be just like Joseph in being gracious in confrontation. It also says he was a thoughtful man. Look at verse 20. But while he thought about these things, Right? Joseph probably had a lot on his mind. It says he went to bed and thought about these things. You know, I don't know about you, if I have a lot of things on my heart or on my mind, I can't sleep worth a wink. I just kind of lay there and uh, stare at the ceiling, and I listen to Karen roll over and snore every once in a while, okay? And, uh, and sleep talk, but anyway, that's, all, that's, that's beside the point. And I'll just lay there and I'll look at the ceiling. And we have a popcorn ceiling, so I try to count like all of the different... Uh, the, the, I, I haven't gotten past five because I can't count that high, but I mean, I try. And, uh, and I'll just lay there and, and, and think about the situation. And I'll end up, I'll go downstairs and I'll read my Bible or I'll write something. And, and then I'll go back upstairs and still just lay there, right? And so Joseph, it says he, he was thinking about it. You know what would have been easier for Joseph? It would have been easier if when he finds out, okay, we're done. See ya. Bye. I'm going to be just. You go do whatever your own thing. And and just done it right away. He wouldn't have had to think about it anymore. But no, he decided to, he decided to sleep on it, right? And so he, he was willing in his kind, just graciousness to not act rashly, but to think and seek God's will. We need to be the same way. Let us be thoughtful people when it comes to our fears and conflicts. Let us not act rashly or quickly, but think about God, what God would have us to do. And so really, Joseph kind of sounds like uh, Israel's most eligible bachelor at this time. He is kind. He is gracious. He's thoughtful, right? Everything you want in a a husband. 
And God was preparing a man who would do right, be gracious, and think about what he was doing. And then he gave him a message. He gave him a message. And that message is to do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that what it, which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. You know, how, you know what else you could say? Don't be afraid because God is working. This circumstance does not make any sense to you right now. This trial you're experiencing is scary, and I will not minimize that. But God is working. God is there with you. He is at, plan- he is at work. He has a plan. God is working. Sometimes we don't understand why people do what they do. Or maybe, maybe you've gone through experiences where you've had to clean something or work on something and you end up having to tear it all apart, right? And there have been times where you know, I'll be working on one of Frankie's toys or I'll be working on something in, in, in uh, our house where we live and he'll walk up and say, Dad, what are you doing? And I say, oh, well, I'm just fixing this or I'm just fixing your toy. And I'll go, um, but Dad, it's broken. Well, I know, that's why I'm fixing it, okay? And he'll say, no, but like, Dad, it's worse than it was. <laughs> I'm like, son, you're three. Leave me alone, okay? Thank you. <laughs> like, I, I know that it's worse, okay? And, and you've probably had similar experiences, right? It's like, but Dad, what are you, what are you doing? Why, why, is it, why is it like that? And the answer is just trust me, son. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. I'm working. And so there is no reason to fear your situation because you know that God is at work. God wants to use whatever he is doing to you for his glory. So let him. Let him use it for for his glory. So, I did it again, like yesterday. I preached the message at Christmas time, not yesterday, like last Sunday. And, okay, what did that actually have to do with Christmas? (laughs) Like, it, it sort of does, but here's the connection. Okay, so we've seen three people receive the same message. Do not be afraid. Good old Zach receives the message to not be afraid because his, hear, his prayer has been heard. Mary receives the message to not be afraid um, because um, the prayer, and then what was the second one? Sorry. Hmm? Oh, because God gives grace. Thank you. Yeah, there we go. How am I supposed to have you remember it if I can't remember it? Okay. We don't be afraid because God hears your prayer. Don't be afraid because God gives grace. We see don't be afraid because God um, is at work. But really, this could all be summarized as one thing, one overarching message. Don't be afraid because Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. He is going to save you from your sins. He is going to give you grace to continue to live. He is going to guide you and lead you. He'll give you another comforter, the Holy Spirit. He will give you all these things, so don't be afraid. That was true for them. It's true for us now because Jesus is coming again. We have the hope of Jesus and eternity in heaven. We have the hope of his rule, his reign. We have the hope of his peace, of his government. We have no reason to fear, but every reason to rejoice. So do not fear. Jesus is coming. Are you ready? Are you cowering? Are you not working, not remaining faithful? No, remain faithful. Stand up. Be brave, not because of who you are, but because God hears your prayers. God gives you grace, and because God is working something good. Do not be afraid. Let us pray. Father, you are good. You are only good. We thank you for the grace that you have given to us, We praise you for the truth of your word. We thank you for the fact you hear our prayers even right now as we corporately talk to you. You hear us. You love us. You listen to us. God, you are at work in this church and in our lives. Help us to not be afraid. God, give us the grace to stand strong, to keep moving forward, to take the next right steps. Please, we need you. We cannot do it on our own. Any efforts we try to make will be pointless without you. Father, we love you. I pray that you will help us to love you more 
to not be afraid, but to take uh, hopeful steps forward. I'd like to ask you a question. Keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed just as we take a moment to reflect. Are you afraid? You know, God is working something and it doesn't make sense sometimes. But there's no reason to fear. There's no reason for anxiety. There's no reason for bitterness. There's no reason for the loneliness that you feel because God loves you. He wants you to be hopeful. Would you please remain faithful? Would you pray? Would you obey God? Would you rejoice in what God is doing and will do? That's what he wants. What I'm going to ask of you now is not much. But I'm going to ask you to make a commitment today to not be afraid, but to stand firm in God's grace. You can do it in your seat. You can come up and kneel at the front, whatever it is that you want to do. But as the piano plays, take this time, dedicate your heart. I will not be afraid, but I will trust in God's grace.